Hello, it's Steve Fentress on behalf of the Strassenburg Planetarium at the Rochester Museum and Science Center. And this video was taken on August 21st, 2017 on the campus of Volunteer State Community College, Gallatin, Tennessee, about half an hour north of Nashville. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. At this point, we are using the famous eclipse glasses or watching projected images of the sun. Totality, as seen from Tennessee, was about two and a half minutes. Let's skip ahead to near the end of totality. Who's driving during a total eclipse? And totality ended and we returned to that weird dim light with razor sharp shadows caused by just a crescent of the sun being exposed. What everybody was looking at, of course, the totally eclipsed sun. The moon in just the right place and at just the right distance to exactly cover the bright part of the sun called the photosphere so that we can see the beautiful outer atmosphere, the corona. Many, many photographs using different techniques were taken. Each one captures a different aspect of the experience, but no one photograph captures all of it. Very nice visualizations from the Science Visualization Studio at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, showing the moon's shadow sweeping over the Earth. If you're in the little black dot, you see totality. If you're in the larger gray circle, you see a partial eclipse. Here's an outer space point of view. The moon goes around the Earth about once a month, and when it goes through the Earth's shadow, there's a lunar eclipse, and when the moon's shadow touches Earth, there's a solar eclipse. So we might wonder, why don't we have a solar eclipse once a month, every time the moon comes around, and a lunar eclipse once a month? Well, let's look at the situation in three dimensions.
the moon's orbit is actually tilted about five degrees compared to the Earth-Sun line. So we have to follow the Earth and the moon around the sun until we reach one of those times that occur about twice a year called eclipse seasons when the alignment is right. Then we can expect a lunar eclipse and then two weeks before or two weeks after a solar eclipse. Predicting eclipses. Here's an illustration from one of my children's books depicting supposedly primitive people and giving the impression that predicting eclipses is so complicated, so modern, so high-tech, it's practically impossible unless you're a super expert. But actually, if you understand the basic principles, here's the Stellarium program showing us our sky rendered as a kind of a bowl. There's the moon. And here's a date panel. By the way, Julian Day, that's something astronomers use to get away from being confused about time zones and daylight saving time. They just number every day from a certain date back in the year 4713 BC, and it makes the math easier when you're adding and subtracting dates. But let's look at dates in the kind of format we use. And we're looking at a spring day in 2020. So the sun and the moon have tracks that they follow through the sky. The track followed by the sun is called the ecliptic. And if we turn off the Earth's atmosphere for a minute and advance through some months, we see how every month the sun follows this path, the ecliptic, and appears against the background of different stars. For example, in June, see how the sun is in the same part of the sky as the constellation Orion with the belt stars, three stars. So that's why we don't see Orion in our sky in June. The sun is in the way. So that's the sun's track across the sky. Then you might see a pink line here. That is the moon's orbit, which is close to the ecliptic, the sun's path, but not quite the same. The moon's orbit crosses the ecliptic in two places called nodes. Here's one of them. And let's follow the moon through the end of March 2020, stepping day by day. And on March 31st, the moon reached a node, but the sun was not there that day, so there was no eclipse. However, let's step forward to the year 2024. And let's find the moon. It's got to be around here somewhere. There it is coming in on the right, April 6th, April 7th, April 8th, the moon reaches the node at the time the sun is there. Now, if you'd like to know more about how to predict eclipses, here's the math, and I've compressed this little video into 30 seconds in case you want to go back and stop and rewind. So there is a time interval called the Saros, 18 years plus 10 or 11 days. Eclipses separated by an interval of one Saros are said to be part of the same Saros series. So if you go to, say, the excellent EclipseWise website run by Fred Espinak, who does, used to do the eclipse calculations for NASA, you can get lists of hundreds of eclipses, pick any one of them, go forward or backward in time by an interval of one Saros, and you will hit some other eclipse. Let's look into the future. As seen from Rochester, New York, on the morning of June 10th, 2021, the sun will rise almost totally eclipsed. So this will be a time for those eclipse glasses. If you have trees in the way, you'll miss it because this is happening early, right after sunrise. It's all over before 7 o'clock. The central path of this eclipse passes over the North Pole. So this is the best we'll see from North America. A couple of eclipses of the moon are coming up. 
November 19th, 2021, in the wee hours of the morning. So it's November, early in the morning, challenging conditions. Maybe we'll get lucky and see this beautiful total lunar eclipse. This could be a very nice event. The night of May 15th to 16th, 2022. The moon totally eclipsed for over an hour. Totality spanning the midnight hour. A beautiful spring night, at least we hope. We'll see that reddened, totally eclipsed moon against the constellations of summer with that reddish star Antares down to the lower left. Something to look forward to. Then we go to 2023 and we're using NASA's eyes on the solar system, flying past the sun along the line from the sun to the moon to the earth on October 14th, 2023. Get out those eclipse glasses, because here's what will happen. The moon's shadow comes down over the southwestern United States, follows Central America into South America. As seen from Rochester, New York, this will be a partial eclipse. Six lunar cycles before the big one in 2024. From San Antonio, Texas, for example, it will be an annular eclipse. From the word annulus, which in Latin means ring, a ring of the bright sun is left exposed because at this time the moon is not quite close enough to us to completely cover the sun. Then, the big one, April 8th, 2024. The path of totality going across Mexico and up the eastern part of North America. Let's use our Stellarium program in perspective mode. And here is the scene from Rochester, New York. We're starting uh, about a quarter after three on Monday, April 8th, 2024. And we will let the software run at the natural speed so that we will experience the 3 minutes and 38 seconds of totality. Watching through safety glasses, we might see the very last of that crescent of the sun get smaller and smaller and smaller, and only when it's completely gone is it safe to turn your face down to the ground, then take the glasses off, then carefully look up, and make sure you are at the beginning of totality. The sun will be about halfway up from the horizon to the overhead point in the southwest. So you want to find a place that has a good view to the southwest. And if the sky is nice and clear, two planets down there, Saturn and Mars very low in the west-southwest, Venus a little higher, and Jupiter up high in the sky. Here's the path of totality for this eclipse. The moon's shadow passes over a, a Mexico about an hour before it reaches us. Passes over San Antonio, part of San Antonio. Waco, so Chip and Joanne will see it. Dallas, most of Dallas is in the path. Carbondale, Illinois gets another eclipse. They were in the path in 2017. Bloomington in Indianapolis, Indiana. Cleveland, and then the center of the path of totality almost follows I-90 up to Buffalo. And here's Western New York, April 8th, 2024. If you are between the blue lines, you will see a total eclipse. And the closer you are to the red line, the longer totality will last for you.
Here are some pictures I took at the RMSC campus on April 8th, 2017 at eclipse time. This is where the sun will be. So any place with sun shining on it is a place you'll be able to see totality. And of course, we're hoping to welcome people from all over to Western New York. Speaking of that, an editorial comment. On December 26, 2019, there was an annular eclipse and the central path started in Saudi Arabia, passed over Oman, the center of India, and then Indonesia. In other words, a large part of the Muslim world. Many people were seeing their first substantial solar eclipse and responded on the internet from the perspective of their Muslim faith. Some of the responses to that on the internet were ignorant and rude. That's not going to happen in Western New York in 2024, is it? People who remember the 2017 eclipse remarked on the atmosphere of fellowship, sharing, civility. The tizzy about the eclipse glasses was gone once the event had started, and people were simply enjoying this magnificent natural phenomenon that's so much bigger than any of us. Don't forget to look in the opposite direction. During totality, it might be dark enough to see the bright stars that we associate with the winter sky, Sirius, brightest star in our night sky, and maybe enough stars to recognize the form of the constellation Orion, famous for his three belt stars. The first little bit of the sun that's exposed as totality ends is like an ice pick of light hitting your eye. You must immediately reach for those glasses. And you will be impressed at how powerful our star is when you see it exposed once again. That's the eclipse of April 8th, 2024, as seen from Rochester. Next one coming to the United States, August 12th, 2045. See you then.